Let's talk about games, shall we? Long before the days of the handheld consoles like the Switch or the 3DS, we had the Game Boy. To run the Game Boy on the go, it took four AA batteries and came with a whole lot of accessories that I will not get into into this video. The whole reason I'm doing this video is because not so long ago I was cleaning my house out and had found a corner of the area that had been long forgotten. You see, as I was cleaning, I had found a brick white box-like object that seemed very familiar with several smaller boxes that looked like cartridges. As I investigated further, I had noticed it was my old Game Boy and several games that had long been forgotten. The memory of playing these games as a kid had begun flooding back to me. Let's talk a little more about the Game Boy itself. The Game Boy is an 8-bit handheld game console made by Nintendo, the first in the Game Boy franchise. It had its first release in Japan on April 21st, 1989, then found its way to North America three months later. Then Europe got it over a year later. It was designed by the same team that developed the Game & Watch and several Nintendo Entertainment System games. The Game Boy combines features from both the NES Home System and the Game & Watch hardware. The console comes with a dull green dot matrix screen with adjustable contrast, a directional pad, two game buttons, and a start and select. It also has a single speaker with an adjustable volume dial. The Game Boy Portable System has a library of games which were released in plastic ROM cartridges such as Batman Forever, Tetris, the Mega Man games, The Legend of Zelda Link's Awakening, Missile Command, Castlevania, Metroid, Super Mario Land, and if you had a Game Boy Classic you probably got your start on the first Pokemon game. By the end of the console's run, there was almost 700 titles on the Game Boy Classic system. Nintendo went on making games for this handheld console for many years. Then they came out with the next generation of Game Boy, but that's another story. When I found this old brick game console, a flood of memories came back to me. Like where I was when the game was purchased after hours of begging my parents for that particular game. Or sometimes it being a Christmas or birthday present. Sometimes my mind drifts off to that younger Wildfire One sitting in the back of a car as me and my parents were going on a long drive, attempting to get that one level farther in Tetris, trying to beat that one boss in Final Fantasy, or playing as a shipwrecked Link, trying to find out what's going on on an island. Back when the Game Boy came out, there were several pros and cons to having it, especially compared with Nintendo's rival Sega, who released the Game Gear in April of 1991 which was only a few years after the Game Boy was released in North America. Some of the pros of having a Game Boy back in the day were it was a portable game station that had a pretty good battery lifespan. It wasn't Game & Watch. Let's face it, Game & Watch sucked. There was a whole bunch of games to choose from and play. The thing was indestructible. One even survived a barracks bombing in the Gulf War and still works to this very day. Seriously, it's on display at the Nintendo Store in New York. Some of the cons about having the Game Boy Classic were there was no backlighting so you had to play it in a well-lit area. The coloring of the games were very dull because of the dot matrix screen and having to constantly buy batteries for that son of a bitch. The Game Boy Classic was discontinued sometime in the year 2000 but sold a little over 119 million consoles before its reign ended. It's funny how something even like the Game Boy can give you so many memories and nostalgia. Thank you nerds for walking with me down memory lane on this. We'll see you next time on the next Let's Talk About Games. What game consoles or games bring you nostalgia? Let us know in the comments section below. We absolutely love to hear from you.